Hi, and welcome back to Virtually Real, presented by All This Malarkey. I'm Kieran, and today I'm joined by Corey. And Corey's here just to wind me up. I actually really enjoy this space they create, the floating stuff. The clock tower needs its clock winder. Every day I get up and pump out the rising water. Fine, but I get to stay in the ship. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I can move around in here. Jules, you hear me? Okay, I'm I got clear, hands Levi. now. Radio good. set and working. Good, good. In this game, it's a puzzle game for sure, mm -hmm. uh, where you get a limited time to record your actions mm -hmm. and make clones of yourself. How did you find the gameplay? I found it, I mean, I'm a closet engineer and I found it quite appealing from that respect. So it was kind of like you had a puzzle to solve and there were kind of multiple different aspects to it, whether it was exploding fruit, for example, or uh, getting around cupboards and stuff like that. And so you had to really think through a problem and solve the problem. And I was kind of really, really into that. No, it's gone. All right, this guy over here. Ah. Okay. They are helpful. Okay, let's see what happens with this one. Oh, nice. Okay, that's where I wanted to get. So these are the magic gloves everyone's talking about. This one to start recording. Oh, he's got my ninja moves down pat. I love it. I press near, okay. So I got to get near him and then press that near his head to delete him, okay. Let's start with that first room. The first puzzle that you had to um, figure out mm -hmm. was how to get electricity to the clock tower. Yeah. Uh, talk us through the process of that. Yeah, well, I guess, so there were three capsules and they were more or less connectors. Um, so there's a cable running through and you've got to connect these three canister type things or connections and then pull a lever. Um, and that lever kind of pulls those connections into place, but it's got to be timed right. So as the electricity flows through, you got to time it right. It's got probably a good um, introduction to the whole game really, because it is all about that kind of timing and thinking through those those nuances of, of how to make this the most efficient way to do something. I feel like there needs to be some beats, some more upbeat music to this. It's a little bit too spacey for me. All right. My first robot. There we go. Gotta time it right. Ah, timed it wrong. So then I gotta delete him. Bang. There we go. It's not quite right, but it'll do. Oh, maybe it won't actually. Try that again. All right, a bit more happy with that one. Now we're talking. Oh, wow. What just happened? <laughs> wow. There's so much going on now. I don't know if I need you guys anymore or do they... Oh, there you go. Don't need you anymore. Thanks for your help, really appreciate it. You guys will not be forgotten. And after you figured out the first puzzle, you find your yeah. token and we get to the, uh, the map. Mm -hmm. uh, how you transport to different rooms, which is very, very, I, I thought was very cool, the whole globe thing. Yeah. Um, 
talk us through how the levels differ. How do you get to a new level? Well, I think this is this is fundamentally something I found really cool about the way the game was designed was the fact that the shell of the landscape doesn't really change. And then there's a kind of section in the middle that almost like an elevator drops away and a new one comes up. And I find that really cool because you're you you're in this familiar space all the time, but the set the center of the piece of the thing is moving. And so and things that you do on one level, then you kind of need to connect to the next level. We need to collect fruit on this one and all the time, but you've got that constant fruit counter in the side that's the part of the constant outside part of the of the realm. And I just think it was a really clever way to design the um to design the kind of like look and feel of the the of the game. Nice, there we go. Ah, yeah, nice. That's good. Okay, that's... A... Oh, okay. Now we go. All right. Getting the hang of this. <laughs> what is this thing? Ah, oh, yes. <sighs> Man. I love it. All right, so I guess she's got to... That doesn't do anything yet. That'll take me somewhere else in the future. Oh, nice. I got a bit of a feeling that I'm going to have to take the fruit, put it in here. That doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, we'll grab this over here. Okay, there's one in there. Okay, so if we start you by going... All right, so I've got to make this more efficient. So I'm going to go... Look at that. Go, boy. Let's talk about the clones again, because once you... Once you get the gardeners, they're called. Once you get them into um, seed fruit production, yeah, it's pretty cool. You pick the fruit off the tree. You've got to get it to the other side of the room. You can just throw it. Yeah. You can then go and clone yourself catching that and popping it into the basket. So it's you know great, great fun and great. Th there's possibly a hundred thousand different ways yeah. of achieving the same same outcome, which makes each playthrough, I think, different for different people. The premise is is that you've got to rack up as much fruit as you possibly can because the fruit that you're racking up and turning into juice in the juicer is more or less powering your ability to travel through through space or to the different level, should I say, um, and also for different machines and stuff to function. So the idea is you want as much fruit getting into that machine as you possibly can and getting cranked into juice as you possibly can. So he's good. What happens if I do this? All right. So what I want to do is I want to click that, go like that, and go. No, not far enough. I'm going to have to delete him. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to have to go underarm on this one, I think. So I go to this. Boom. Yep, that's 100% what I'm doing. Yes. Boom. Look at this. I love it. High five, buddy. Ready? Nice. All right, same thing again. That's about as productive as I'm going to get in this room at this point. The art style of the game, the graphics and stuff like that, how did you find that? How did you find the motion? Well, I think, I mean, the robots themselves, the motion, like everything you recorded was quite natural looking after the fact. And the actual motion of you catching the fruit and passing the fruit on was replicated really well by the robots. 
Um, the actual kind of, I guess, structure of the game and the graphics in the game were relatively basic, but I think under the circumstances, they suited the look and feel of the rest of the game really well. All right, so let's see what else I can do. Apparently there's more places to explore. All right. Keep going, you good things. <laughs> the fruit just got sucked away. Ah, oh, a plant can be completely removed. Oh, there. Ah, oh, nice. Now we're cooking with gas. Look at this, and a counter. So now I'm assuming I can just go back to here. Hey boys and girls, back. Still just going hard at it. Oh no, hang on. Getting low. Pulling it too regularly. Might just like slow you down for a second. Now I can pull this out and go. Pull that out again. Bang. Whew. Boom. There we go. Woo wee. Cooking with gas now. Loving it. All right, I'm gonna try a Scotty Pippen shot. Ah, oh, Scotty Pippen's not even a good shooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. They're jacking up now. Look at the numbers. Boom. So uh, the big question is, did it leave you wanting more? Did you want to play more? Did you want to finish the game? I would, so I'm not traditionally a gamer. I don't own any consoles myself, but after this game, as I said, I'm an engineering closet engineer. So I think I would go out and buy this just to play this more because I love, I love solving problems and it was a great puzzle. It was a great kind of forum to, to kind of test your, your mental capacity to solve problems and stuff like that. I think it was awesome. Um, so you will be coming back on to uh, have a first impressions playthrough of Jurassic World at the Aftermath collection. Um, thanks for coming on for this time. Yet again, if you like what you're seeing, like and subscribe down below. Um, if you uh, have played the Clockwinder, the last Clockwinder, or would like to play it, comment below. Let us know your thoughts and feelings on the game. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.